going for the treble. I mean, run for Oscar. The last time we saw him on the flat, he won on the bridle in the Cesarevich. Has to be a player, but could it be Stratum for the hat-trick? Race number 35 of the week. Richard. Thanks, Ed. Trying to have some fun with this one. The Queen Alexandra stakes two miles, five and a half furlongs. And the nine runners leave the stalls. Typewriter was a little slow to get set, and in the early stages, Esther Cass, one of the outsiders, is one of the first to show. Ryan Moore's keeping Dawn Rising well away from the other runners. A Frankie Dottori tactic may be in his honour, as Dawn Rising is just gradually edging over. So Le Grand Vizier and also Coltor settle down well to the fore. Just behind these, on the inside, we have First Emperor, as Dawn Rising continues just to saunter over. The blue and white colours belong to Stratum, as they make their way up the home straight. As the inside, Esther Cass is now no better than midfield. And early on, typewriter tracks Falcon 8. And the very pale colours have run for Oscar as they continue what is just about the full extent of the straight course. So they can take their time. You can see just passing the five furlong marker. And it's Coltor who has the lead. Dawn Rising has gradually just moved closer. And the end result looks as if he's going to end up sitting in second place on the outside of First Emperor in third. The Grand Vizier, out and out Steyer, is in fourth place with Stratum, the dual winner of this race, on the outside of Estacas as they make their way up the straight. Falcon 8 with run for Oscar and still at the back, typewriter. So making their way round that final bend, they'll be taking in a circuit's tyre. Coltor out in the lead for Jason Hart, one of the outsiders. Dawn Rising, by contrast, the market leader sitting in second place. Keep an eye on those sectionals. It's been pretty steadily run to this point. We're pushing 14 second furlongs. They'll get faster once they run downhill, irrespective of any increase in the pace, but it's just so more than steady early on. In third place on the inside, race's first emperor. The Grand Vizier is on the outside of Estacas. Stratum settles in sixth place. A run for Oscar Falcon 8 and typewriter. Always now the biggest crowds of the week on Saturday, particularly in the enclosures down the race course. They've had weather all week to really enjoy. Some top quality racing and one more chance of a winner. As out in the lead, Coltor leads Dawn Rising as they turn away from the stands. Begin to run downhill with First Emperor on the inside. Grand Vizier still sitting quietly enough in fourth place. And all of the riders appear pretty happy with their positions. No sign of anyone looking to change them at the moment with Estacas racing in fifth place. Stratum is in sixth. Run for Oscar, Falcon eight. And last of all is Typewriter. So passing the mile and a half star, we'll be back there for the King George in just over a month's time. It's Coltor who leads them inside the, the final mile and a half. Dawn Rising sits in second place, just in third first emperor with the Grand Vizier. Esther Cass, Stratum under William Buick. He's in sixth place, just ahead of run for Oscar and Jim Crowley. Last two, Falcon 8, Tom Marquand, and last of all, typewriter for Oisín Murphy. So it's Coltor on the descent. That's the advantage, and that advantage remaining a length. And you see, the pace does increase just naturally here because they run downhill to Swindy Bottom. At the moment, all of the riders still sitting quietly as Coltor at 35 miles an hour makes the descent towards the lowest part of the race course and then the climb up hill will begin. Dawn Rising racing in second place in third is first Emperor, the Grand Vizier is in fourth. Racing in fifth place, Estacas, Stratum, run for Oscar, and still the last two, Falcon 8. Last of all is Typewriter. So turning at the far end of the race course, the final mile. Queen Alexandra stakes in the conclusion of Royal Ascot 2023, and Coltor leads the climb first from Dawn Rising in second place. First Emperor in third, then the Grand Vizier. They now pass the seven. Mr. Cat is in fifth place, and Mr. Cass is just ahead of Stratum, run for Oscar. Falcon 8, still at the back, is typewriter. First signs that we're just beginning to increase the tempo as they make their way past the 6. The jockey's hands just getting a little bit more active on their reins. You can see Coltor just beginning to push along. Dawn Rising will have few excuses from there. Sat in second place. First Emperor in third, Le Grand Vizier in fourth. And those who are on these out-and-out -out stairs will just be trying to improve their positions. The sprinting's not normally their forte. And out in the lead, it is Coltor with Dawn Rising pushed along in second place. First Emperor is in third. The Grand Vizier is in fourth, then Stratum is happy hunting ground. On the outside of Estacas, as they make the bend, it's Coltor who has the lead. Dawn Rising is now only about a neck or so away as they make the bend. The Grand Vizier still travels OK on the outside of First Emperor. Stratum beginning to peel out, and then Estacas. So heads a turn for home in the Queen Alexandra, and battle is now joined. Dawn Rising is the first to commit. Le Grand Vizier travelling up strongly. Slipping through on the inside is Typewriter, who's got a really nice run up the inside under Oisín Murphy as they make 
get their way with a furlong and a half to go. Dawn rising in the centre, tight right are over on the far side. Len Le Grob is here. Stratum and Hester Cass running a mighty race as they enter the final furlong. It is Dawn Rising who has the lead. He's seen off typewriter, but Le Grob is here as the last challenger on the outside. Dawn Rising behind the drip hell. Le Grob is here as they go for the line. And it's Dawn Rising who wins the Queen Alexandra for the champions of the week, Ryan Moore. And Joseph O'Brien trains another winner here. Racing in second place, the Grob is here. Typewriter was uh, just about holding on for one of those uh, minor honours. Run for Oscar rattled home late when it was all over. It did turn into a little bit of a sprint. Dawn Rising was in the perfect spot for Ryan Moore, his sixth winner of the week, and another winner on the week for Joseph O'Brien, who came here this week with just one Royal Ascot winner and ends with several more. Dawn Rising repels Le Grand Vizier, who travelled up really strongly for Richard Kingscott. And in third place, it is run for Oscar, who has sneaked through on the inside. He may have been the one that was most inconvenienced by the way that race was run. He was well back to quite late. Typewriter was in fourth place. Estikas had a really good race. In fifth, he was any price you'd like. But as we've learned, this Royal Ascot, sometimes that hasn't mattered. But it was Dawn Rising. J.P. McManus Colours wins the last. And finally, one for the punters today. Well back, Dawn Rising, all the way down to two to one. And how appropriate that Ryan Moore, the champion jockey at Royal Ascot, for the 10th time, goes out on a winner. Very appropriate, Ed, you're right. And what a ride this was. And a very willing partner in Dawn Rising. I thought he was going to get caught by the Grand Vizier, but Dawn Rising kept finding and finding and finding. Ryan Moore was really positive. He was off the bridle turning in for home and uh, he certainly stayed well when we watch this back run for oscar oh my word he was stopped and stopped and stopped the whole straight it's on the far side there isn't he in the noseband typewriter has zipped through that inside hasn't he and looks to serve it up to the eventual winner but his run just peters out a bit and the grand vizier who is a super old horse isn't he, he won, i think he ran earlier in the week he, he won this in 2019 as well he's a wonderful old servant but jp mcmanus joseph and ryan Well, I know Ryan doesn't really mind superlatives, but that was an outstanding ride, Ryan. The way it unfolded, I know you smirked, but you were in a really good position, and I love the way the horse responded for you late on. Yeah, look, he, Joseph obviously had him prepared beautifully for today. He's been jumping, he's won a graded race over hurdles there in the winter. Had a nice run at Leopardstown. And he put, into, he put, he's in, he put himself in a nice spot, and I just gradually built along. Um, it's nice to finish the week with a winner. I'm going in there. You can go in now. Um, just a, a brief word about when Grand Vizier came to challenge you. Was you always confident you'd hold on? Yeah, he was. I hadn't really um, asked him for everything. And he was always finding plenty. You know, Joseph's horses aren't going to stop. Uh, Ryan, obviously, today you're crowned the top jockey at Ascot. But as you well know, as you well know, Frank and Atori has ridden in his last Royal Ascot race and an opportunity for you as one of his biggest rivals and someone that shared the weighing room with him here at the Royal Meeting to um, perhaps give us your thoughts on the Italian maestro. Yeah, look, it's hard, hard to say. Um, I'll miss him. He's still here for a bit longer yet, so... Um, I, look, I've, 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 I remember Frankie riding my grandfather when I was small and... Uh, the, the reality is he's the most beautiful rider you've ever seen. He's built, he's built, if you want to build a jockey, that's how you build one. And um, he's unbelievable talent, unbelievable talent. And uh, he's a tough boy as well. You know, he's, um, he's always, he's always wanted to be at the top and to stay at the top for, I think, 35 years. That, that, that takes a lot, that's not easy. Well. Not bad from you today, Ryan. Indeed, this week. Congratulations on being champion jockey at Royal Ascot once again. Yeah, six was <laughs> Well, that was class from Ryan Moore. Really good tribute to Frankie Dettori. But the truth is, this week, I mean, at the moment, you'd want Ryan Moore ahead of anybody on any ride. When he's it's fair to say, Jason, all week he's been an absolute class apart. Yeah, hasn't he? He, he's been super. We've, we've been spoiled. We really have. Um, you know, I mentioned about Jamie Spencer's double. You can talk about Neil Callan managing to ride a couple of winners at huge prices.